Coming up on Half Mile of Hell. This morning we went to a whole bunch of functions and got back here tonight and forgot I was still look, looking for an outrider. Yeah, he impressed me. There's other guys that never because they forgot where they come from and oh look what I got and look what you don't. Oh, well, yeah. He's not that way. Well, that's the ultimate. There'd be nothing better than to run against your son for a hundred thousand bucks. It is the nine team. It is for the championship. It's the West's original extreme sport. Four horses hitched to a wagon, racing hell bent for leather around a half mile track. The stakes are high, and disaster is only a heartbeat away. These are the Cowboys, and these are their stories. So hang on tight, because you're about to ride the half mile of hell. This is Mike Richards in the morning, the fan 960. It is a uh, Chuck Wagon Palooza. Chuck Wagon Alooza? Chuck Alooza. It's one of those this morning as we have. Uh, Three drivers in studio. I'm with Rick Frazier, Kelly Sutherland, Chad Harden, and I believe, uh, Mark, you're still on the line? You betcha. Now, do you have anything to say to uh, Chad or Rick or, or your fathers? <laughs> Morning, guys. Glad you're down there. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> See, this is as friendly as it gets. Because I've I'm been... Happy, but you know that about me, Mike. <laughs> yes, I know. I've been to the barns, and I've seen what happens after the races. <laughs> I've seen the protests. I've seen the yelling. I've seen the screaming. But this morning, it's very much like romper room. That's what I'm finding. Everyone's clean. Everyone's talking to me. Really hoping the other guy does well. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I hear a lot of that talking. Boy, that, that Jerry Bremner, he sure is swell. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Canada's fastest growing city plays host to the greatest wagon event of them all. The Calgary Stampede GMC Rangeland Derby. Nothing is bigger or better. I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's compelling. They come down that stretch and you're white knuckled. If you're here in Calgary, you hear Joe Carberry's voice. It could be the Sutherland side by side. It could be Jerry Bremner in this particular uh, season who's having a great year. And the jackets are up, the mud is flying. Every fiber of the muscle in a horse that you can see rippling the thunder of the hooves down that back stretch. It's drama. It's some of the best drama I've ever seen, and I can't take my eyes off. The first five days are done. Another five lie ahead. The grueling pace is beginning to take its toll. Penalties, a sick wife, hasty decisions, and an avalanche of sponsor events only add up to 28th place for Chad Harden. He needs to be in the top 10 to qualify for next year. Rick Fraser is in the very same predicament. He's on the doorstep of the top 10. At risk is a good portion of next year's income. The Sutherlands have been the main attraction so far. On day one, Mark shot right to the top of the standings. He's on the hunt for his first and biggest event victory if he doesn't crumble under the mental strain. Now, your father said that he thought you'd have a great run at the Stampede, and Mark, uh, you're having a pretty uh, pretty nice time. Yeah, it's, it's going good. I'm, you know, sitting second. I guess that's just one spot out of where you want to be. Kelly has tussled with his son for that number one position. He's never left the top five and handles each day with an unwavering calm. Like a rattlesnake coiling for a strike, this 10-time champion will save himself for the right moment. For the father-son aspect of it, 
you know, you, you sit there Christmas time. This is the, the fruit of your loins. This is the man who's given you gifts. But when the horn goes off tonight... He can get ready for an ass kicking. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The, the love is probably over. <laughs> <laughs> Country music superstar Paul Brandt has come home for the stampede. Over the last few years, Rick and Sue Fraser have gotten to know Paul. They invite him to come for a visit to their barns. I appreciate oh, you yeah. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Come to the barn, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Come. All right. All right. Okay, good seeing you. Hey. Hey. No one caters to the business side of the wagons like Chad Harden. He's setting a record pace this year for sponsor activities. Seven o'clock, we were at the Spartan Controls breakfast. At eight o'clock, we showed up at Stephen Avenue to go to ATB's breakfast. Now we're going over to four more blocks downtown Calgary to go to BJ Services breakfast. And then we're gonna go to the chili cook-off after that. So another busy morning. It wouldn't take so long to beat, I'd have been over to see you already. You know? I'd just like to explain, I'm just doing a quick part of what my strategy is for tonight. I drew barrel three tonight. So we hooked a team that we're hoping that we can get to the front end on. We're, we're not probably gonna get there. So if we don't get to the front end, I think I got enough run to pull in behind and catch them down the lane. They've been running hard this week. It's been tough, but Chad now has a clear strategy for tonight's race. Only he's forgotten one very important detail. Oh, well, it's sort of a uh, little busy around here with sponsors and stuff. And this morning we were swamped again and we went to a whole bunch of functions and got back here tonight and headed over to one of our tents and sponsor function tents and uh, forgot I was still look looking for an outrider. So. second half of the Calgary Stampede GMC Rangeland Derby is underway. After night number five, the barrel rotation is complete and the heats are shuffled again. It's a driver's responsibility to secure outriders after each shuffle. Chad Harden forgot he still needs one more. By now, there may not be anyone left. Hello. Hello. How's it going there, Chad? Good. Is Wayne right? Yeah, this is Wayne right. Are you in my heat or not? Yeah, I actually, I am. How are you? Okay. Uh, Tanya came like uh, Wayne Knight's hair in hand. All right. Came about yeah. uh, 10 minutes ago and asked if I still open. Okay. All right. I'll find somebody else then. Thanks, Wayne. Alrighty. Okay, take care. And that makes way to that number three turn. He's taken dead aim on the leader, but he can't get up. Heat by heat, the drivers move closer to the biggest payday in wagon racing. The final four, the dash for cash. All one hundred thousand dollars of it. Rick Fraser is sitting in twelfth place overall. It's time to break into the top ten.
has a good run. He's fifth on the night, and that puts him 10th overall. Yeah, that was a lot better night tonight. It's a little more encouraging. You know, we're 10th and we're five and a half seconds back from the fourth spot. That's a lot of real estate to gather up, you know, realistically. I mean, anything can happen, I guess, but who knows? Chad is cutting it dangerously close to race time with his Outriders search. Brad, you got a ride in my heat? Yeah. Is this Rios? You got a ride in my heat, Slim? Huh? You got a ride in five? No, there's my ride right there. You want one? You want me to do? Leaders. Okay. You handle that job? Okay. Chad secures Rio King, a lucky find given the late hour. He's third in his heat. Chad's time moves him up one position to 27th overall. Went good, actually. Team started really well. Inches or feet from getting the rail. And otherwise, we gained two seconds. Probably been an easy top 10. So one of those things, they worked good. We ended up three wide. and Nothing you can do, but it ran home hard, too. So that's good. The redraw keeps the Sutherlands in the same heat for the next four nights. All eyes will be on Kelly and Mark as they duel it out for top spot. All right, Jack and Dusty, unfortunately, the premier heat of the evening. You got the four top wagons going against each other here. Wow, does it shape up to be a bad heat. The main event of the night looks like it's off to a good start, but looks can be deceiving. It's been a season of close calls for Mark Sutherland. He's already fallen out of the wagon box once. Tonight was almost number two. I come to the bottom, and when I turn back to the track, I hit a ridge. I don't know if I grabbed a seat or what I did. If you come out there with those with three wagons, you're going to get hurt. I've seen guys get killed that way. At the same time, that left leader was already turned back to the track and he just charged and he just jerked the line out of my hand or something. I don't know what happened, but uh, I reached down, grabbed the line fairly quickly, pulled up the slack, and uh, we went all right after that, thankfully. But uh, I damn near fell out again. And Mark Sutherland is back in along the rails, about four legs off the front end. Mark recovers to take second place in his heat. 
It puts him back on top of the leaderboard. Kelly wins the heat and keeps the pressure on his son. He's now third overall. While the Sutherlands thrill thousands in Calgary, someone has to watch Mark's farm and care for the rest of the horses. A job delegated to the lowest man on the pole. Well, I feel kind of bad for Moose out there by himself because it is kind of lonely. I was out there the other day doing a little bit of laundry and stuff and he was just happy to see somebody. In Calgary, living conditions remain difficult for the rest of the Sutherland crew. Yeah, they're sleeping in tents and stalls, they're sleeping on hay bales, there's no privacy. There's mice running around like in their beds and stuff like that. I personally couldn't do it, but uh, they love the atmosphere and that's why they're here. They find accommodation basically wherever they can stay. If that's uh, in an empty box stall, if that's in the back seat of a pickup that's sitting there, that's where they're living right now. Living conditions aren't the best. These guys sacrifice and uh, it's expected. When they do it, it's appreciated. That's what's curious and that's what's important about the people that are around me is, you know, there's a number of people that have made sacrifices. As tough as Calgary might seem for the Sutherland crew, no one would ever trade places with Moose. Staying in the trailer here, um, the bugs are really bothering me. I'm really looking forward to getting to Calgary. Hopefully I'll be able to catch the last couple of days at least. Well, I think Moose is probably going to start going crazy here in the next couple of days. I don't know if that guy can go more than three days without seeing somebody other than bugs. <laughs> I spent 17 days alone last year at Mark's, and it's not very much fun. You start to go a little insane, the bugs are really bad, and you know, there's nobody to talk to, so insanity kicks in after. Paul Brandt takes the Frasers up on their invitation and drops by their barn. Hey, I'm Paul. I'm Candace. Candace, it's nice to meet you. Everyone wants a chance to meet the country music superstar. Come here, I want to show you a couple of these horses, a few of my favorites. Every horse has a story. Paul, he was uh, barred off the racetrack as a two-year-old. Nobody could ride him, he bucked everybody off. Then yeah. Grandpa Ray bought him. Took him two years to get this thing broke. He is like a machine. Incredible. He's 15 years old and he could, well, when he was 10, there was nothing I could run with him. Yeah. He's my guy, aren't you, huh? And this is Smokey, Smokey the Bear. Hey, Smokey. He is one of the kindest horses I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He knows he's got to run. Yeah. That's as easy as it gets. So you see, you see their attitudes changing when they're down here. Oh, wait, when go. the harness, when you start, they hear wagons rattling. Yeah. And the harness comes out. Oh yeah. It's just, they know. They know. And they love it. Oh yeah. They, you know, some of these, some of these horses, like Major. Yeah. What were you gonna do with him? Sure. He was born to do this. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't do anything else. That's cool. Yeah. We take care of him. We hand feed him in the wintertime. Yeah. It, it can be 43 below, 45. Okay, start the quad, get the wagon out, and out you go. Yeah. yeah. Jump up there and sit in the wagon seat, and then you can see what it's like from our oh, vantage point. Absolutely. Okay, you couldn't pay me enough to do this, I can tell already. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Put your feet in the corner of the box. Right. There. Then you get your lines in your hands, yeah. and sit up straight, yeah. and hands out in front of you, and that's how you sit. Incredible. Isn't that cool? Oh, yeah, cool. It's cool. Or death defying, one of the two. <laughs> man, you don't... oh, man. You got to have a couple screws loose, I guess. It's kind of like the music <laughs> business in a way. <laughs> I've been fortunate racing a chuck wagon. I've got to meet a lot of different people, from the ambassador of the United States to multi millionaires. Yeah, he impressed me. There's other guys that never because they forgot where they come from and, oh, look at what I got and look what you don't. But he's not that way. And in that, that kind of thing, that impresses me more than all the money you have.
It's tradition that guests sign the wall of a driver's barn. It's also good luck. Tonight, Rick will need it. He'll run the entire heat on the edge of disaster. Well, when the neck yoke broke, it's, it's the most serious thing that can break. Now look at this. He's going to challenge Rick Fraser for the lead. It's night number seven at the Calgary Stampede GMC Rangeland Derby. Rick Fraser is set to defend his 10th place position. His team lunges at the start. They put Rick in a prime position to take the rail. But something is wrong. Rick suddenly pulls wide on the backstretch, like he's giving up the race. Joe Carberry said they're off, and they shocked me. The left wheeler started really hard, and the right wheeler stood there like a cow waiting to me out. And then our neck yoke broke. It's the most serious thing that can break. I never noticed it until he just started into the second turn. I started taking a hold of the wheelers really hard to keep the pole up off the ground. And I did by letting the leaders pull the wagon and pull on the wheelers to keep the neck yoke up. And then I just moved out off the rail in case the rest of it busted off. I would have took the legs out from underneath my wheelers and then we'd have piled up and the guys behind me would have piled into me. Somehow, Rick manages a second place finish, but there's little time for celebration. His ability to steer or even stop was seriously hampered. Thanks to his outriders, the outfit finally comes to rest deep in the backstretch. The faulty part is quickly identified. Yeah, this is the worst Yeah, but it's right there. See that? This here was That's the where the weld, yeah, but that's where, cracked that's where yeah, the I mean, weld was. So that's where it's always gonna break is where your weld is. The fact of the matter is I built my neck yoke wrong. Nine years ago, I built it wrong. The thing pivoted two ways, it's supposed to pivot three ways. I didn't know. Now I know. Well, this isn't very heavy. No. Mine's way it. heavier than that. Could have been a lot worse. It could have been a major, major accident. And it's one of those things that happens that sometimes equipment do have problems. After seven lonely days on Mark's farm, Moose is finally invited to join the Sutherland team in Calgary. Sutherland was quiet, it was lonely. Uh, the bugs were pretty bad. I was looking forward to coming to the Stampede for the party, also to uh, see uh, Stretch and Studley, also to have a bit more people around me. It's great to be here. Moose even made a t-shirt to commemorate his accomplishment. It's this Sutherland slave camp where survival is half the journey. It's just, it's just something, just, uh, just to throw a bit of humor out there. The shirt's not to say that the job is bad or anything. It's just a gag shirt. Now it's down to business. The next two days will be the most important in the Sutherland family's history. I do understand that these next few races are very important. Mark and uh, Kelly are in the top four, so there's a lot of money on the line. Uh, there's a truck up for grabs as well. Just gotta put that in the back of your mind and just make sure that you're harnessed properly and that the horses are kept well. Mark's in first, Kelly's in third. Only two runs remain before the final four are decided. Three of the times that I won the dash, I was 20th or lower on the first night. On the seventh day, the running starts. It starts in the middle and it goes to the end. 
From here on in, Kelly is running only for the king. But Mark is still playing for Team Sutherland. He holds back in an effort to help his father take the rail. Get down there! Get the f down there! That's right! The sacrifice could be all in vain. If he didn't get in, he was going to get hung out wide and take a trip. And it's a long ways around the track when you're out that wide. So uh, I never really threw, this, threw the lines at my horses until he cleared me. And uh, I was hoping he'd get in front of Jerry. Mark drops to second place. His generosity allows Jerry Bremner back into first. Kelly is right behind in a close third. Yeah, you know, I guess it, you know, it might affect my time a little bit because I pulled a little bit. But uh, uh, right now, you kind of have to be strategic about how you race. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see Dad in the final four with me. They might be side by side in the standings, but they are now miles apart in their strategies. You know, you got to try to win it. It doesn't matter what happens. You can't worry about uh, who else is in there. You got to beat the other three guys, and you got to treat everybody just like they're uh, they're a tough competitor. Hi, guys. Hi, Daddy. Chad finally gets a break from business to visit Dory and the kids. What could be more important than a reunion like this? That doesn't shut off when you're with your This is my breaking his legs. <laughs> Take a message. <laughs> Take a message. No, careful. 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 <laughs> it's okay. See, so it, it's not important. You're with your family. Eight days ago, pneumonia forced Dory Harden to leave the dust and commotion of the stampede barns so that she could recover at a friend's home. I ended up at the Foothills Hospital here in Calgary. It was an experience I don't want to ever go through again. And now I'm on my second set of antibiotics, so I definitely know that uh, it was very serious. I'm feeling better. It's uh, going to be a slow process. I would like to be better overnight but uh, that doesn't happen with me and, and pneumonia, so it'll happen. I'll get better. It's getting bigger, eh? Do, do you think? <laughs> Is that what happens in 14 days? It hasn't been 14. How many has it been? Today to today. Wednesday. It's been 14 days. <laughs> huh. You might be right. Time flies when you don't know that you have a child, eh? Give me your phone, I'll answer it. <laughs> Here, no. oh, Chad has kept himself busy while Dory recovers. Maybe a little too busy. <coughs> Dawson, meet your dad. Dawson, meet You'll get five in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> Mommy, look at Do you think he changed? There's a sexy, let's see, answer the call. Just say hello. Chad's phone. Hello. Yes, hi. Okay, just let me talk to him. Kathy. Hello. So you can do two things at once. How are you? Good. Each night coming up. Barrel racer Charmaine James 
has more world championships than any woman in pro sports. To a young barrel racer, she is a goddess. Yeah, she has no idea. No you're idea. Coming. She is going to be so excited. She, wa she watches your video. And Rick Fraser knows just how to score a hit with his daughter, Kaylee. She spends at least three hours a day studying your films, and it's made a, quite a difference in her horse and how good she's progressing already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you Kaylee? Yeah. I'm Carmaine. Nice to meet you. You don't have to soak his feet. Yeah. Yeah. When I looked up and I seen her face, and I was a little dumbfounded. <laughs> I look up to her for all my bell racing stuff. She's the best, so why not look up to her, eh? So, do you go high school rodeo? Yeah, we try. You go to jackpots? Yeah. Up here, four Ds and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, in the summer, though, I'm always doing this. Yeah. It's oh, hard. That's a good experience. You gotta know horses, whether you run barrels or... Yeah. Have truck working horses, right? You learned about how to keep one sound, huh? Yeah. To be the best is to learn from the best, an important philosophy that Rick is passing on. What a start there for Rick Fraser. That's the old form that got him to the championship fight for a couple of years. That ring in behind him. Equipment problems on the previous night dropped Rick out of the top 10. He battles on to win his heat on night number eight and holds steady at 12th overall. And here he comes now. An exciting finish for Chad Harton is watered down by another two seconds in outrider penalties. He remains at 27th overall. Final heat of the night features yet another battle between the Sutherlands. It's a decisive win for Kelly, who moves to second overall behind Jerry Bremner. For the first time, Mark drops from the top two. He now trails his father in third place. One more night will determine who will take home a truck and who will chase down $100,000. Day number nine, festivities at the greatest outdoor show on earth continue at full tilt. Rick Fraser takes the stage at his sponsor's function to thank everyone for their support. Well, we couldn't be over here without our kids and our hired help that are back at the barns telling me the horses getting everything ready. We appreciate everything they do, but most of all, on behalf of all of us at our barn, we appreciate all of you guys that support us. Thank you very much for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. Got a good free wagon race going right down the middle. This is Rick's last chance to make the top 10, to re-qualify for next year. Rick Fraser's that high on the rail. We'll see how this unfolds. 
If Rick Fraser can squeeze through with the top, he might catch Jim Harrelson. Look at this for a finish now. Who do you like? Red shirt, white shirt, down the middle. Rick Fraser starts to fly away. Mission accomplished. Rick's win puts him in the top 10 and guarantees his return next year. Sponsor festivities continue at Chad Harden's barn. A familiar face joins the party, and Chad couldn't be happier. Yeah, it's actually a lot of relief to see her back and the kids. It brings a little bit of stability back. It's just nice having her around. She's still not feeling the best, but a lot better than her having her not around here. I think in, in his way of me being back, he's, he's excited, but yet uh, still don't see him very much. But yeah, I think he's, he's happy that I'm home. People think I'm crazy, stupid, silly to be on the road, but I knew that I had to come back. Chad takes one more shot at trying to improve on 27th overall. He's second in his heat, but remains at 27th for the show. Chad will have to earn his way back to Calgary by finishing 22nd or better on the association tour. Heat number nine will determine the aggregate winner and the owner of a $50,000 truck. It will also determine if a father and son are destined to go head to head for the biggest prize in wagon racing. Well, that's the ultimate. I'd stated it before. I mean, there'd be nothing uh, better than to run against your son and uh, for 100,000 bucks. I just hope that he bellies up and wins it. Tonight is the key run to make it, but he's got to beat me. And uh, that's quite an accomplishment because a lot of guys haven't done it. A lot of people might take that as arrogance, but it doesn't matter to me how they take it. I know that I can win, and that's the important thing right here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's gonna be a battle. Our heat is so even that it's pretty difficult to steal a rail off anywhere, and it's very easy to lose the rail, so anything could happen, but it's highly unlikely that I'll outturn all three guys in my heat. You know, they're smoking, those guys are flying, and it'll be a disappointing thing if I get knocked out, but I won't be entirely shocked. Kelly is third in the heat, but a one-second wagon interference penalty to Jerry Bremner changes everything. After nine days of racing, Kelly has the fastest total time. He is the aggregate champion. Kelly, Neil, Hugh, and Jerry. Mark's name is not among the final four. He is fifth by just over a second. It's disappointing. It's it's such an uh, emotional roller coaster. You, you know, we we were there all week and it's so exciting and oh, I really truly believe he was going to be there. So when you didn't hear his name called in those top four, it was it was crushing. The biggest thing about the Calgary Stampede this year for Mark was he didn't bend under the pressure. There's a tremendous amount of pressure when you're winning the Stampede, and he's learned deep down inside, like deep down, I can do it. I can do it. That's what's important. Dave. Am I am I satisfied? No. How could you be satisfied with finishing fifth? 
if the horses run hard next year and outriders don't screw up and I don't screw up, I'll be in the final four. You know, it's not rocket science, it's chuck wagon racing. Dad made it pretty plain one time when he said, if you, you like, if you want to win, all you got to do is run faster. For the fifth time, the King is crowned fastest of them all in Calgary. Tonight, the Sutherland crew has good cause for a celebration. With the news of their boss's big win, the Sutherland barn crew hits the town to celebrate. When we got to Cowboys, uh, we went in through the back entrance, got in there, there's a huge dance floor, huge tent, and I'm just like, wow, look at all of these girls. Because as soon as I got in there, there's this beer girl wearing these booty shorts, with half her ass hanging out. And I'm just like, what's better than cold beer and seeing some girl's ass? It's Moose's first night out in the big city, and he's determined to make it memorable. Moose is one of those guys that has a tendency to talk to every lady he sees, no matter what. Not that that's a problem, I mean, good for Moose, but uh, after a while, the guy's just gotta say, okay, it's enough. Just to break the ice with the girls was just ask them if they wanted a posse sticker. Then you just introduce yourself as, a, as one of the ranch hands and uh, they just took a shine to us. I haven't been to a bar that size before. Basically, I had the experience for it for myself and I did firsthand and it was great. I had a lot of fun. Day 10 of the GMC Rangeland Derby is all about the dash for cash. Drawing a good barrel could make all the difference. Well, naturally, when you make the final, I mean, the, the barrel you need one. It's been 180% of the time off barrel one, so you can't defy the odds game. And uh, if you don't, then uh, four. You know, three's the worst draw you can get. And, you know, you just take what old lady luck pulls out of that hat for you. You got a 25% chance when you make it. You take what they give you, and, uh, and then you try to win it. I just drew uh, four out of the hat. It's been one off four. I won it there before, and uh, let's go in with the attitude. She don't matter anymore, eh? So I'll uh, get them warmed up and uh, hope everything's 100%. You know, it's a big accomplishment just making the top four here. That's nine days of an endurance test. Nine days of hard running against 35 other really good chuck wagon guys and, and good uh, drivers and stuff. It's just nice to be there again. Well, everything has to go right. You know, if it starts from your practice turn, you have to make a good practice turn. Hopefully the other guy doesn't get in your way and you don't get too close or or something, you let your horses just be themselves, and they they work better, eh? You try to picture how that race is going to play out before it happens. 
but it, all of a sudden it, it, it can change in mid-stride and then you have to make a quick uh, adjustment and then you got the real deal and, and you have to figure it out from there. In the final, that's where you got to win. You gamble, you do whatever you can to win. It doesn't matter because they never, ever remember the guy that runs second, ever. The road to the final four ends here. One sudden death heat. A hundred grand greets the winner at the finish line. At the wire, they call it Neil Waljenbaugh's victory. But a penalty for starting ahead of the horn eliminates him. Kelly was next in line. Could it be the King's night again? Not if Hugh Sinclair has something to say about it. I had a chance. My wheels skid the whole way around the track. How long have you been driving? Hugh is ticked about corner number two where Kelly's wagon collided with his. The judges agree. They penalize Sutherland three seconds. And just like that, a bronze finish turns to gold. Hugh Sinclair wins the dash and accepts the largest prize ever awarded to a wagon driver. Thank <laughs> you.